I'm a synthetic organic chemist. Origin of life is purely synthetic organic chemistry. There's no way around it. I'm perfectly situated to be commenting on this, to be critiquing the origin of life research. A biological, it is before biology takes over. This is purely synthetic organic chemistry. I think that other scientists understand all of this, but they do not. In fact, the people that might disagree with me are biologists because they've never made anything. The only thing they may have made is they buy a kit and they make it, which is made by chemists, but they've never made anything ab initio. In this ooze emerged the first life. I find it problematic in that there's an extrapolation from a very small experiment in a laboratory. Researchers have now created life from non-living parts. There were many kinds of molecules in the primordial soup. I'm boiling up some primordial soup. Your entire civilization, it all begins right here in this little pond of and this is actually how chemists think about universals. It's not quite what you heard this morning from Sarah, where you're talking about sort of hypothetical information things. Chemistry is actually hard to get to work. The molecules precipitate, the molecules hydrolyze, the molecules decompose. And so it's very much a constraint that you have to deal with when you're trying to create artificial genetic systems. He talks about molecules having real problems here. Let's, let's look at another thing that he says. But all the hard work is in the synthetic and analytical chemistry, the developing of the enzymology for these and all the rest of it. I'll also appeal to the funding agencies. You keep funding more of the same thing to take a bunch of chemicals that people buy and they make a bunch of stereoscrambled compounds that could never go by that route had it been a prebiotic earth. And you keep funding it. I don't know why you do that. Why don't you address some of the more fundamental issues here? There's problems with this sort of science. And so uh, I didn't even address the, the origin of life researchers themselves. I mean, these are good scientists. They're good scientists. I don't mean to come against them in any way, but I think that you have to come clean and talk about the state of the field where it really is because this you you ramp things up a little bit and the press the press ramps it up in order of magnitude you've got to ask them let me see the article before you publish it and many of them would let you do this because this thing gets ramped up like crazy science itself tells us that abiogenesis as it's proposed by naturalistic terms today is unacceptable because it just doesn't work you don't need to invoke God, you don't need to invoke intelligent designers, just the naturalistic means, science itself screams that abiogenesis as it is proposed is not the route to how life came about. What were the conditions of early earth? Well, whatever the conditions were, it did not consist of a pristine laboratory. There were no fine chemical producers where one could purchase the starting materials or reagents or buffers. Steve, you are clueless on what I actually said. I said, I'll give you oxidizing, I'll give you reducing. I had a whole segment where I was citing top-notch literature saying that, that it could well have been oxidizing. What are you talking about? You obviously didn't watch my series. You can get of oxidizing or reducing. What video series were you watching? You said you, that you watched 10 hours of it. The 10 hours of video or so that I have watched. But then you said to me, well, you know, you watched the 10 hours, but you weren't really paying attention. I'm going to be speaking today on the addressing abiogenesis and common misconceptions. This is going to be a series. Steve, you never watched my video series, and, and 
you know, that's the bottom line of what's going on. Yeah, because you never addressed my questions. You never addressed them. And then when we got to Israel, that's when I challenged you on it, and that's when you confessed. You said to me, well, you know, I, 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 I watched it. It was on, but I wasn't really paying attention. Okay, so, I mean, he has got a nice chart showing that, or saying that all prebiotic chemistry just is a bunch of chemists in the laboratory mixing ultra pure compounds that they bought commercially and under very strict control, making a mess and then extracting from the mess, you know, a few compounds that may have biological relevance and then uh, claiming that this has something to do with the origin of life. And then his complaint is that the press runs away with this in a way that deceives the public. You know, in 1986, mm -hmm. Bob Shapiro, who was an expert in this field, wrote a whole book that made this criticism. Okay, for, he took about 100 pages, several hundred pages to do so. I mean, scientists are, are human. I mean, we, we like our theories also, and we will advocate them. So Bob in 2009, for example, did criticize some of the work that John Sutherland, who's a very prominent individual in this field, did. I mean, Bob's analogy was that John was behaving like a golfer who had played a golf ball around an 18-hole course and then uh, concluded back in the clubhouse that the ball could play the same course in the same way but propelled not by a rational scientist, but by the wind and the rain. Um, and so uh, some of John's work still suffers from this criticism and you can still find papers, but most of the rest of the community of people who we would call origins of life, prebiotic chemists, most people take this criticism from Bob Shapiro quite seriously. And, and we work very hard to not make that criticism apply. What about commenting on the things, that, the interactome question? What about commenting on chiral-induced spin selectivity? All of these are huge, huge problems. And then when I confronted you on it in an email, you didn't respond. When I confronted you on it in Israel in person, you had absolutely no answer because you didn't even know what I was talking about. Well, in my series, I took a much more recent paper by Reichert in Nature Communications that he published in 2018, where he makes the very same arguments. But you didn't know this because you never watched my video. Here's exactly what I said. Here's where I'm beginning to see some agreement. Um, Clemens Reichert, he wrote an article called Prebiotic Chemistry and the Human Intervention. He writes, such a pure chemical scenario is unrealistic prebiotically, but necessary. Further, he writes, further, the ideal experiment does not involve any human intervention. He is agreeing with me. If you really want to have a prebiotically relevant reaction, you can't buy pure chemicals. It's unrealistic. You got to use the mixtures you, you come up with. Secondly, the ideal experiment has no human interaction. So they're devising the most amazing things that they can do, and still they're not even coming close. They're still not even making the, the building blocks of the building blocks. He's seeing exactly what I'm seeing. And he's an origin of life researcher. And he's seeing what I'm seeing. This segment shows that Steve Benner never even watched my video, which he later confessed to when I challenged him to his face.